Edmonton's choice for more music, more variety. K97, classic hits. Melissa Etheridge on K97 at number 50. Her fans have taken to throwing their brassiers on stage when I she's hear performing. That. She tells the girls, look, if you're going to be dancing, lady, you're going to be needing these, so hang on to them. Huey Lewis in the news, uh, still going strong after 14, has it been 14 years? Oh, at least. Man, Huey says it's almost impossible for the band not to be together. It's almost like we're resigned now, you know? When we first started out, we were. it was just the thrill was so much fun. And there in the middle, it got a little snarky, quite honestly. I started. Th- everybody, I think everybody started thinking, yeah, I, could, I might be able to do, you know, but now I think there's a sense that, oh, we'll never find anybody else, you know? It's like a marriage, kind of, you know? From four chords and several years ago, featuring covers of R&B classics, here's Huey Lewis and the News at number 49 on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94 at number 49, Huey Lewis and the News. I'm Todd James. And I'm Bruce Kenyon. That song, But It's All Right, it was originally a hit for J.J. Jackson, but there was also another great version done by an Australian band, Jojo Zepp and the Falcons. It was never a hit here. I, I think it might have been in Australia, but it's a good song, and it was a great hit then, too. For you collectors at home. You want collectors? Robert John Lang, we were talking about, Mutt Lang. Right. He produced a record called Clover. That was the name of the band. In fact, two of them. Both of them were still Huey Lewis was a member of that band, as ah. were a number of members of the news. Uh, but you can already hear him developing his producing style. Pretty good band. I knew about Clover. I didn't know Lang was involved in that. Matt Lang, one of his first projects. Named after a close-up photograph of W.C. Fields' nose titled The Gin Blossoms, here's New Miserable Experience, the number 48 CD from Gin Blossoms on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. From New Miserable Experience at number 48, we'll be back with more from the godfather of grunge and a CD that triggered the return of Beatlemania. Scientists estimate that all the world's information doubles every six months. And all you want to know is, what's the weather like today? Concise, up-to-date, informed. K97's news team, helping you keep pace with the information age. more of the Top 97 CD Countdown of 1994 on K97 Classic Hits. I'm Ringo and I play the drums. Uh, you are, I'm Paul and I play the uh, uh, bass. I'm George and I play a guitar. I'm John and I too play a guitar. Sometimes I play the fool. Yeah, yeah, the John and his <laughs> sense of humor. Newly found treasures unearthed in the vaults of the BBC made the charts in the form of a double CD. Now, I mean, they, are, are their vaults that poorly organized? <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering that, too. It's always, uh, you know, lost treasures, they call it. I'm sure they knew about them. They were waiting for the right time. What a coincidence. Anyway, these are songs that were never uh, before released by the Beatles. Uh, they were done live on the BBC. It went straight to the tra- top of the charts and is still there here in Edmonton, That's is it right. not? Yeah, it is. It's a huge seller. It is. And Number 47, Beatles Live at the BBC on K97's Top 97 CD Countdown. Lay down your... Number 47, the Beatles Live at the BBC. You know what the nice part about it is? You hear the Beatles live without all that screaming. You know, on the other live <laughs> albums, you couldn't That's hear true. the Beatles. So it's nice to hear what they sounded like live back then. When they were playing, they couldn't hear themselves play either. That's true. They had no monitors. No, that's why they love Ringo. They could just feel the beat there. Neil Young was back with Crazy Horse for an edgy electric effort in stark contrast to last year's Unplugged and Harvest Moon. It's at number 46 on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. Neil Young at number 46 on K97 from Sleeps With Angels. Well, Todd, what would a countdown be without Phil Collins? That's like a benefit album without Don Henley. (laughs) Well, he hasn't left the charts when you think about it, either with Genesis or on his own since... Well, when was his first solo record face value? About 1979? Something like that. He, he, he'll be the first person to say that he's on the radio too much. But what can he do? He can't, you know, force radio stations not to play him. Some people got problems. Other people got problems. <laughs> Bill Collins at number 45 on K97. K97's Top 97 of 94 at number 45, Phil Collins and both sides. We'll return with the events of August 1994 when K97's Top 97 continues. K97's Top 97 Countdown continues with the events of 1994. We have waited for too long for our freedom. 
We are demanding of Mr. Major's government that he take decisive steps now to move the situation forward in a fundamental way. It was in August that the IRA unilaterally laid down their arms. Also in August, my holidays were almost ruined when uh, I was stopped at the border on my way to the Grand Canyon thanks to my cousin Bob, but it's a long story. We won't get into it. Well, or his past, for that matter. <laughs> As it turns out, Todd ended up in Toronto. Uh -huh. The Major League Baseball season was canceled. The Pocklington Northlands deal was sealed. The Stones tour began in Washington, D.C., and rumors grew that they'd roll into Edmonton. And it was the 25th anniversary of Woodstock. There were different from the original, but mud was a common denominator. Joe Cocker, who played both Woodstocks, talked about the experience. Um, I felt a bit more at home with the first one. It, you know, the kids were getting a stranger. <laughs> Janet Jackson was nominated as a future screen legend at the MTV Movie Awards this year in a surreal moment with Seinfeld's Kramer. Why not? She's got one flick under her belt, right? Really? A future legend? You've <laughs> got to be kidding me. Her album, Janet, is at number 44 on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 1994. Janet Jackson on K97, I don't know if she's going to be a future film legend, but she's racking up Grammys and record sales almost as big as her brothers. Yeah, you're right. It's from her album of 1994 at number 44, and we heard again. I'm Todd James. And I'm Bruce Kenyon. And Elton John had another busy year musically and with his never-ending work to raise money for AIDS research. Things weren't always so together for Elton. Of course, his drug problems and hair problems are well documented. We don't want to talk about that bad hair weave. <laughs> he says all the pressure took its toll in the 70s. I think in 1975, I've just worn out, basically. I've done so much work. 17 albums, separate singles, world tours. I really don't... Yes, I did know how I did it. I was enthusiastic. I was naive. I couldn't... I was like a kid in a candy store. I was just so happy to, for all that to happen to me. I couldn't believe it. I was a fan who made it, and I still am a fan who's made it. Uh, it's just that over the last few years, things have complicated my life a lot more. I've, you know, I've got had too so many fingers and so many pies. Up to 75, I just had my finger in the music pie. His duet CD is at number 43 on K97's Top 97 Countdown. K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94 at number 43, Elton John's Duets. And that was uh, Elton teamed up with, what a surprise, Don Henley on shaky ground. How he ever got Henley out of the house, we'll never know. <laughs> New Zealand's crowded house played the convention center in May of 94. We had something of a treat for the opening act for everyone there. It was Cheryl Crow. I got a feeling to be switched around if they were touring together right. right now. In the middle of that tour, though, the house's drummer and one of the founding members just up and quit the band. But the tour rolled on without a hitch. Their Together Alone is at number 42. Nick Seymour talks about where the album was recorded. There are these completely untouched, unspoiled parts of New Zealand that are still yet to be plundered. So we uh, we actually uh, went to one of these beaches, recorded the album at a beach house, and um, we, we in fact were going to name the album after the uh, after the beach itself, but then decided, oh no, we'll, we'll try and keep it a bit of a secret so uh, so that the, the, good, the people that live there won't be inundated by tourists uh, in case this album is successful, and it's done quite well for us so far. So. You know, when the drummer left, the rest of the band was quite happy. They said he was being a real drip. <laughs> Crowded house together alone. They're at number 42 on K97's Top 97 of 1994. Crowded house on K97. We'll be back with a wild flower and the keeper of the John Travolta Shrine. CIRK FM 97.3 Edmonton. K97. Here's more of the Top 97 CD Countdown of 1994 on K97 Classic Hits. We should take a moment to wish everybody a Happy New Year. We haven't done that yet. That's right. Completely forgot. We're into 1995. That's right. I'm Bruce Kenyon. And I'm Todd James. Tom Petty left his heartbreakers behind for another solo album in 94, though most of the band played on Wildflowers anyway. Tom continues to make valid music, but is he satisfied? God, I don't know. You know, I don't know if you're ever satisfied or if you ever really reach that point where you feel like, I mean, I always feel like, boy, wait on my next one now. I'll show you, you know. <laughs> I'll show you something good on the next one. Just give me one more chance. Tom Petty, Wildflowers, the number 41 CD on K97's Top 97 Countdown. K97 
K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. You don't know how it feels. It's Tom Petty from the number 41 CD, Wildflowers. Blind Melon's debut is still in the top 40 a year after its release. And, uh, well, what happened to the little B-girl? Just disappeared, remember? Had her 15 minutes of fame, and that was that. At number 40 on K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 94, it's Blind Melon. Blind Melon at number 40 on K97's Top 97 of 1994. At number 39, it's another soundtrack. Boy, there were lots this year. Oh. Lots of soundtracks. Well, this one came from the critics' favorite this year at the box office and the Palme d'Or winner at the Cannes Film Festival. It's Pulp Fiction from director Quentin Tarantino, fast becoming a big name in Hollywood. He chose all the music for the soundtrack, and he picked Urge Overkill's version of uh, Neil Diamond's Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon, right at the first listen. The first one on there was a remake. Of girl, you'll be a woman soon. And some people I know know them, and they said, oh, they just adore Neil Diamond. They just love Neil Diamond. Well, I love Neil Diamond, too. All right? And so, like, you know, uh, um, I heard uh, um, I heard their version of it, and it was great. Now, I have always loved Neil Diamond's version of that song, and their version is even better. All right? And all of a sudden, it's like... This is it, without a doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Quentin is also a huge John Travolta fan, who, of course, is the star of Pulp Fiction, has his very own shrine to uh, Travolta on his mantelpiece at home, which I think is just a little bit weird myself. You're not kidding. And even invited John over to see the shrine, and I think John thought it was (laughs) weird, too. (laughs) The Pulp Fiction soundtrack is at number 39 on K97's Top 97 Countdown. This is Urge Overkill, Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon on K97. Girl. Urge Overkill on K97. What is he talking about? This version is better than Neil Diamond's. It's exact. Note for note. Warble what? for warble. It's identical. I don't, have you dug up the Neil Diamond version lately? I think, you know, you might you might change your mind after you hear it. No, 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 no. Nothing wrong with my memory, Todd. It sounds exactly <laughs> oh, that's the same. Right. Okay, well, we'll look back at the events of September 1994 when K97's Top 97 Countdown continues. Good morning. It's just after 11. I'm Jennifer Cador with a K97 Classic Hits. K97's Top 97 Countdown continues with the events of 1994. I see no reason why we shouldn't uh, stick to the timetable. I uh, usually said... Uh, for example, eight or ten months after, or uh, after the times I said in 1995, I see no reasons why, uh, on the contrary, I say at last, we're in position to show things, to put everything on the table. In September, the people of Quebec gave Jacques Perizot's Parti Québécois a mandate for change. Democratically elected President Jean-Bertrand Aristide returned to power in Haiti. A man crashed a plane into the White House in a botched assassination attempt. Residents of Millwood rallied again to save the Grey Nuns Hospital. The Jerry Lewis Telethon was on again with a record amount of money raised. And Bruce Kenyon was the Edmonton host. Now, Bruce, have you ever met Jerry Lewis? Hey, lady! No, I haven't had the honor, Todd. (laughs) (laughs) I was indeed the Edmonton host. Okay. Also, oh, horrors of horrors for Canadians. The NHL season was postponed. And just think, nobody thought this would last. The MTV Awards were held. Michael and Lisa made everyone gag with an on-screen <laughs> kiss. It was really stomach-turning. Even host Roseanne was speechless. This is Dr. Fraser Crane. I'm listening. Also in September, Fraser cleaned up at the Emmy Awards for top sitcom. NYPD Blues won six awards at the Emmys. And in September, we lost Nikki Hopkins, often played piano for the Rolling Stones. Yes. Tennis star Vitas Garolitis uh, died of carbon monoxide poisoning that in his was home. strange, wasn't it? And actress Jessica Tandy passed away. Did you have the air conditioning check? I told you to have the air conditioning check. I don't know what for. Don't never allow me to turn it on. Hush up. It was from Driving Miss Daisy. Of course, uh, Jessica won an Oscar that year. Jimmy Page and Robert Plant teamed up again in 94 for what essentially is a Led Zeppelin reunion. They neglected, however, to tell John Paul <laughs> Jones about the sessions. He's still a little hurt about that, too. I think he is. What took Page and Plant so long to record another album? Well, here's Robert Plant. We've been encouraged time and time again. Yeah. <clears throat> but often the encouragement was quite sort of base. And I, I didn't really think that, that the Led Zeppelin... <clears throat> story should have such a sticky end plus um 
We'd had a couple of reunions which I thought were pretty substandard, where we didn't prepare for it properly. And there's quite a lot of res- quasi-responsibility carrying the name. He's got that right. They called it Page and Plant, no quarter. It's the number 38 CD on K97's Top 97 Countdown. K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 1994 at number 38. Page and Plant reunited with no quarter. That was Gallows Pole. I'm Todd James. And I'm Bruce Kenyon. Tragically hit back with their fourth full album in 94. Upon announcement of their Coliseum show here in 95, tickets sold out in hours. The hottest band in the country as we speak. Day for night at number 37 on K97. Top 97 CD countdown of 1994 at number 37, tragically hip, Dave for Night. Gord Downey, of course, lead singer and, and just a, a, a catatonic performer. I mean, he gets up and he's into seizures and he's, you know, I think that's what the, part of the reason that the show is sold out so quickly, February 21st in the Coliseum. He's a fine performer. He is. It's going to be a great show. Until a few years ago, uh, Amy Grant was known mostly as a gospel artist. Her first non-gospel album, Heart in Motion, was huge a couple of years ago. And she's back in 94. She says she didn't change her approach to recording much at all. And then with a pop album, it, it, I don't necessarily exclude songs that have um, maybe a faith uh, concept. But, you know, you tend to thinking, I tend to think I want to find songs that maybe address the whole person. Okay. But the thing that's the same is what makes an album good, in my opinion, is that you hear songs that move you in any way, to smile, to think, to laugh, to cry, and, and that process is always the same. House of Love from Amy Grant at number 36 on K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 1994. K97's Top 97 Countdown at number 36, it's Amy Grant. We'll be back with big ones from Aerosmith. The rambling, gambling man is next when K97's Top 97 of 94 continues. Now, here's more of the Top 97 CD Countdown of 1994 on K97 Classic Hits. I'm Todd James. And I'm Bruce Kenyon. Bob Seger has been playing rock and roll for over 30 years. He summed up his career in 94 with the greatest hits package, and he told us about his first ever public performance. The first performance I ever did, I was 15 years old, and it was my junior, it was not my junior prom, because I was a sophomore. It was uh, the junior prom in Ann Arbor High School, where I went to, uh, I was a sophomore in high school. And there was just uh, three of us. We had a, uh, a black drummer, a guitar player, and I sang lead. And that was it. And we did a half an hour. Got a great set of pipes, doesn't he? He does. You should go into radio. <laughs> Bob Seger at number 35. Here's one of the new cuts on his greatest hits package. It's a cover of Chuck Berry's C'est La Vie on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. It's Bob Seger on K97 at number 35. C'est La Vie from his greatest hits album. You know... The Greatest Hits album is fine, but Bob has been on hold for the last few years. I'm a little disappointed. I was a huge, huge fan, and I don't think he's made a really good record in some years now. Now, his mother passed away recently. That affected him greatly. Also, he was uh, ahead of a jury, uh, which took up about five or six months of his time. You're kidding! Yeah, it was was a big case in the area he lives, which I believe is Michigan, and uh, he was the head juror. Well, he recently got married and had a baby as well. That's right. He's been busy with other things. So I yeah. guess. Sorry, Bob. Sorry. But <laughs> get a new record out, will you? The Rankin family's North Country, still a big seller in 1994. It's the number 34 CD on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. K97's Top 97 of 94 at number 34, the Rankin family. We rise again from North Country. They had a special uh, this year on the CBC and made a couple of appearances on the Rita McNeil show. Ooh, they're doing <laughs> fabulous. You know, that girl could give Freddie Kirchie a ride for his money with that high note. She can hold him, yeah. She's great. I love her voice. I don't know what it is about her voice. Just the clarity in it. It's so almost pure. It is crisp. Yeah, you know, and I look for that kind of thing for singers. <laughs> Joe Cocker, her, same thing. <laughs> Aerosmith celebrated their 24th year year together with another banner year list of hits and a collection of big ones. It's at number 33 on K97. 
Aerosmith on K97 and Blind Man. You know the girl that stars in their videos? She was in Crazy and uh-huh. two other videos of yeah. blondish red hair. Mm-hmm. She's about to embark on a film career. She is going to be in no less than five movies in the upcoming year. And the other girl, the brunette, Steven Tyler's daughter. Yeah, I know. Who was also in a movie with Richard Dreyfuss this year, which uh, almost made my list of worst movies of 94. <laughs> Chuck, you know, I gotta say, would you allow your daughter in that video... Well, it's it's a pretty sexy video. You well, know? I just, you know, I'm thinking, hey, come on, you're the, you're yeah, the know. father of this girl here. I just thought it was a little kind of creepy. It's K97's Top 97 of 94. I'm Todd James. I'm Bruce Kenyon. And we'll be back with the best at the box office in 94 next. Now, here's more of the Top 97 CD countdown of 1994 on K97 Classic Hits. I'm Bruce Kenyon. And I'm Todd James, and it's time to look at the top movies of 1994. You'd have to say 94, sort of a mediocre year in film, but one rose to the top from Quentin Tarantino. It was Pulp Fiction. We're not going to do anything stupid, are we? Don't you hurt him! Nobody's going to hurt anybody. We're all going to be like three little Fonzies here. And what's Fonzie like? Come on, Yolanda, what's Fonzie like? Cool. What? Cool. Correct the mundo. Quentin Tarantino, director, he's up for all kinds of awards at the, uh, likely the Oscars and certainly at the Golden Globe Awards. And of course, earlier this year, it won the Palm d'Or Award at the Cannes Film Festival. Tom Hanks starring in Forrest Gump. It was the ying to the yang of Pulp Fiction, and it certainly makes my list for one of the top movies of 94. You want a chocolate? I could eat about a million and a half of these. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. After seeing that movie, I could not stop saying, Life is like a box of chocolate. You might we remember. noticed. We <laughs> noticed, Todd. For about three weeks. You uh, were all over the place. Robert Redford directed uh, his exploration of the game show scandal of the 50s. It was certainly one of the best of the year. It was called Quiz Show. I thought the questions were in a bag fall. In a way, they are. You want to win, don't you? Well, I think I'd really rather try to beat him honestly. What's dishonest? When Gregory Peck parachutes behind enemy lines, you think that's really Gregory Peck? And it was one of the best romantic comedies of 1994. It starred Hugh Grant and Andy McDowell, four weddings and a funeral. Uh, I really feel, um, uh, in short, uh, to recap in a slightly clearer version, uh, words of David Cassidy, in fact, um, while he was still with the Partridge family. Uh, I think I love you. And uh... and a list wouldn't be complete without The Lion King. It was another revolution in animation from the people at Disney. Also, honorable mentions to Johnny Depp in Ed Wood and Backbeat, the story about the Beatles' seedy days in Hamburg. It featured a great soundtrack as well. I'd like to point out that I think if Val Kilmer does not win an Academy Award for his performance in Tombstone, it's criminal. That guy is the best living actor. <laughs> he, I'm not kidding. He is my number one. He, that guy is fabulous. Last year you said it was Rutger Hauer, but you know. Well, you're right. <laughs> the second best living. But and he did do a great he job. He's fabulous, that guy. And I'd also like to point out that I think it's criminal that a few good men was overlooked. I think it was one of the best of the year. Once again, that was in 93, but. I don't get out much. What can I say? <laughs> now, back in April, we lost Nirvana's Kurt Cobain, who committed suicide in his home in Seattle. He was the first and maybe the only person you thought of when you thought of Nirvana, but in an interview in 1991, he was quick to point out the large roles of bandmates Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic. Chris and Dave have a big part in deciding on how long a song should be and how many parts it should have. So I don't like to be considered as the whole songwriter, but I do come up with the basis of it. I come up with the singing style during practice, and then I write the lyrics usually minutes before we record. Does Ted Nugent have anything to say here? <laughs> well, I hope not. It was released uh, following Kurt's suicide. This is Nirvana's Unplugged at number 32 on K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 94. Nirvana on K97 and About a Girl at number 32. Blue Rodeo played the Meyer Horowitz back in February, and Jim Cuddy talked about the recording environment for five days in July. Well, originally the the record was designed as um, a sort of a reward project for having been on the road for a long time, and, you know, we learned how to play together because essentially it was a new band with the Lost Together Tour. And after a lot of work, we decided we'd go out to Greg's farm and 
do some demos and maybe maybe concentrate on doing a record but really get all the creature comforts looked after we had somebody come out and cook for us and everybody brought their friends and family and so it was an extremely relaxed communal atmosphere sounds like a blast doesn't it yeah and literally they spent five days in july recording the album that was it that was it five days five days and i think it was a fine album and uh, hopefully more to come from blue rodeo at number 31, it's uh, Blue Rodeo's Five Days in July on K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 1994. They met it. CCR on K97 and Proud Murray from the number 30 album of the year, 1994. That's remarkable. It's kind of surprising when you consider there's already at, at least two CCR Greatest Hits package that have been around for quite a while. They also did a TV campaign a few years back, which sold a lot more Greatest Hits records. Just shows how good they were. You realize they never hit number one CCR? Really? Yeah, they had like six number twos, but for some reason were never able to get to that number one spot. I'd take six number twos. Yeah, me I'd be too. happy with that. <laughs> Bonnie Raitt talks about Canada, and Jan Arden explains June, when K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 1994 continues. more of the Top 97 CD Countdown of 1994 on K97 Classic Hits. I'm Todd James. And I'm Bruce Kenyon. Bonnie Raitz hasn't looked back since her Grammy award-winning album of 1989, Nick of Time. Is it that old? Nick of Time's five yeah. years. Yeah. Man, the time flies. She's a constant tour, you know. She's always on the road. And she's, of course, been here in Canada, north of the 49th, many times. Here's her thoughts on Canada. My feeling is, you know, anybody that has kids in the hall and SCTV has to be so incredibly hip anyway. Bruce Coburn is one of my favorite artists of all time. And, you know, I just... My impression, and most of the musicians I know, our impression of Canada, because all the Saturday Night Live people are from Canada, is just that it must be the coolest place on earth. So I don't even know if that's the same with you. And the band is from there, and Neil Young and Joni. And, you know, we don't get to see what the everyday stuff is like up there, because we just see the cream of the crop come down. She's right. What a great country, huh? And the coolest, certainly the coldest. <laughs> <laughs> Logging in their hearts from Bonnie Raitt's at number 29 on K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 94. We're into the top 30 with Bonnie Raitt at number 29 on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94, Longing in Their Hearts. Ireland's The Cranberries made an astonishing debut in 94. It featured the first song that lead singer Dolores O'Riordan ever wrote, when she was just 17. And I might add, it's probably the best song she's written to date. <laughs> she rhymes linger, finger, what else is left? Singer. Cranberries and everybody else is doing it, so why can't we? At number 28 on K97's Top 97 of 94. At number 28, it's the Cranberries on K97's Top 97 of 94. I'm Todd James. I'm Bruce Kenyon. Jan Arden's second album, released in 94, proved this Calgarian has a wealth of talent, and she may very well be Canada's best new artist, maybe of the last couple of years. Just a great album. I would agree. She explained the title of her second album, Living Under June. So I guess five and a half years I've lived in a somewhat bunker-type basement suite in downtown Calgary, uh, like a house that was built in 1902 by the, you know, by the railway or something, but my landlady's name, who lived above me, her name is June, and I wrote, you know, so much material down there in the last five years that I felt it only fitting that, I mean, what do you call a record? We, it's a good we, title. We, we had tossed around a lot of ideas, and uh, just living under June just sort of, it was interesting to me. It meant a lot of different things. You know, people could think it was summer or... A big year in Italy, too, for Jan, with a song capturing the hearts of Italians after it was used in a television commercial advertising clothing. It's insensitive. From Living Under June at number 27 on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. Living Under June from Jan Arden on K97's Top 97 at number 27. The song Insensitive, written by fellow Calgarian Anne Luray. K97's Top 97 countdown continues with two survivors of 94. One survived an embarrassing and painful mishap on stage. The other, a heart attack that canceled part of his 94 tour. And we'll look back at the month of October next. K97's Top 97 countdown continues. With the events of 1994. No other event dominated the month of October and perhaps the whole year like the Rolling Stones' two concerts, October 4th and 5th in Commonwealth Stadium. The city became a throng of some 
600,000 teenagers. Wally Whitford made the cover of The Sun after a brush with the stones, and he called K97 to describe his encounter. Yeah. Wally, are, are you the guy in the front of, the, of today's sun? Yeah, I actually am. That's a pretty good shot of you. No, not bad, eh? Hey, I like the way that, <laughs> that bodyguard's got you wrapped up pretty good there, Wally. Yeah, they did a good <laughs> job, actually. So how close were you to Mick? Uh, about two or three feet. Two or three feet? Yeah, he kind of looked over and smiled at me. He wanted to see me getting roughed up a bit. Is that right? Yeah. He, like, <laughs> he kind of enjoyed that, did he? <laughs> it looked like it. Well, nice job, Wally. You're, you're on the sun with Mick Jagger. That's a pretty good souvenir, I'd say. Oh, the consolation was I got to uh, meet um, Ron Wood last night. Really? Uh, that wasn't bad. What happened there? Oh, I, I kind of I kind of jumped halfway into the, the cab. I got that far, and I shook his hand, and he basically said, how's it going, man? I said, all right. <laughs> and then I got hauled away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it it just doesn't matter. Just smiling about it. They thought it was pretty comical. About 120,000 took in the concert of a lifetime. Mick Jagger said they weren't just doing it for the money. What about all the beer you can drink and all the girls down the front? I mean, <laughs> there's other things than money. It was a scrappy year in the city council. Things came to a head when Alderman Sheila McKay poured a pitcher of water over fellow Alderman Brian Mason. And Alderman Sheila did later apologize. Deputy Premier Ken Kowalski finally atones for strapping me back in junior high school and is booted out of the Klein cabinet. Let that be a lesson to all future politicians about wielding that strap, but particularly when you're dealing with Todd. The hat of virus claimed the Stony Plain man. Israel and Jordan and their state of war signing a peace treaty in the Jordanian desert. And Saddam Hussein attempted to roll his troops into Kuwait again. 48 members of the Order of the Solar Temple were found burned to death. And there were many more calls for gun control. David Caruso left the hit series NYPD Blues to be replaced admirably by Jimmy Smith. And there was no World Series and John Sexsmith attempted to boycott the NHL, but he still hasn't managed to do that. Steven Spielberg, David Jeffen, and Jeffrey Katzenberg announced the forming of a new movie studio. And we lost Burt Lancaster, Raul Julia, Jimmy Miller, and also Harriet Nelson. And during the opening ceremonies of the World Cup, John Cicada fell through the stage and dislocated his shoulder while millions watched in the stadium and around the world on television. He didn't miss a beat, though. He just kept on singing. It's from the number 26 CD, Heart and Soul and a Voice, John Cicada on K97's Top 97 of 94. K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 94 at number 25. It's John Mellencamp from Dance Naked. His version of the Van Morrison classic Wild Night featuring Michelle Endicello in a duet. Is she from the U.S.? I believe she may have originally been from Nigeria. I'm not certain, though. But has lived in the U.S. for some time now. Yes. Okay, as we move along, after giving birth to her first child and shearing her blonde locks, Marie got together with her partner, Pear. Are, are they not married? No. Oh, no. Oh, I thought they were married. No, just good friends. Ah, Marie and Pear. Well, of course, you know them as Roxette. They leapt back, back into the charts with Crash Boom Bang. Roxette at number 24 on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. Aaron Marie rock set on K97's Top 97 at number 24 with Crash, Boom, Bang. We'll be back with Bon Jovi, another big reunion band of 94, and a monster when K97's Top 97 Countdown continues. CD Countdown of 1994 on K97 Classic Hits. I'm Bruce Kenyon. And I'm Todd James. And what a surprise, the greatest hits collection on the countdown. John Bon Jovi reveals what made him decide to join nearly everyone else and package up his hits. You have to look at greatest hits album in a way as a, a recapping of an era, a closing of a chapter, whatever you want to say. And a lot of times people do them after uh, they, they've either peaked or they want to call it a day or whatever. You know, we were looking at it more the way Dylan with volume one, volume two, and volume three. After a 10 year period, I think it was best to think that this is the end of the chapter. You know, let, let's let's look back fondly on everything from Runaway through Keep the Faith as an album, and uh, we did. Crossroads from Bon Jovi at number 23 on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. On Jovi's greatest hits collection, Crossroad, at number 23 on K97's Top 97 of 94. It's a louder, less gentle R.E.M. for 94. Michael Stipe talks about the album Monster. The last record was supposed to be loud and punk rock, and we were all, none of us wanted to make a loud record. 
Peter was not playing electric guitar. Mike was playing a lot on the, on the piano and keyboards, and Bill was sick to death of playing drums, and so we made a punk rock record that was very quiet. <laughs> This time it's very loud. I've never heard him talk before. I didn't imagine him sounding like that at all. What did you imagine him sounding like? Well, he's got kind of a whiny singing voice. I thought he had a whiny speaking voice, too. He sounds like a balding guy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, uh, the album bore a line from Dan Rather. What's the frequency, Kenneth? Remember when he got mugged? He says yeah. that's what the guy told him. R.E.M. from Monster, number 22 on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. <laughs> K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94 at number 22. R.E.M. and Monster and What's the Frequency, Kenneth? You know, I'll bet Dan Rather was hoping people would have forgotten all about that by now. It was a pretty embarrassing incident way back then. And it was. And here it is again. They've completely refreshed everybody's memory. Hell froze over in 94 for the Eagles when they reunited. Now, the reference for the title was Don Henley's comments following the Eagles' breakup in 1980 that hell would freeze over before they reunited. Well, Glenn Fry's stomach problems slowed them down a bit, but we'll be talking about their March 95 Coliseum show this time next year. I think it's going to be a great one. At number 21, Hell Freezes Over from the Eagles on K97. K97's Top 97 Countdown at number 21, Eagles and Hell Freezes Over. They, of course, will be in the Coliseum March 30th. I like Joe Walsh's comment a few years back. He said... I'm the only guy who didn't leave the band. Nobody told me we broke up. <laughs> I'm still the Eagles. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the countdown and the top stories of November 94 next. K97's Top 97 Countdown continues with the events of 1994. I want to say to my babies <laughs> that your mama loves you so much. <laughs> And your daddy, these whole families love you so much. And you guys have got to be strong. Because you are, we, 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 I just know, I just feel in my heart that you're okay. But you got to take care of each other. That was the creepiest, mm -hmm. most bizarre story of the entire year. Fished in an entire nation, you know? We mm -hmm. all believed her. Not everybody. The sheriff didn't. That was Susan Smith in one of her many pleas on television to have her two young sons return. After claiming for days they had been abducted, the mother of three-year-old Michael and 14-month-old Alex confessed to killing her children. Also in November, a Saskatchewan farmer was convicted of murder in an apparent mercy killing. 55 Canadian peacekeepers were held hostage in the former Yugoslavia. The Power Rangers TV show was called Too Violent. Fire engulfed a via rail train traveling from Toronto to Montreal. A Vancouver abortion doctor was shot. Republicans cleaned up in the U.S. midterm elections. Newt Gingrich becoming a force to be reckoned with. Edmonton City Council decides to sell Edtel to TELUS. And the first cross-border Grey Cup game ended in victory for the B.C. Lions and all of Canada as they defeated Baltimore. 45-year-old George Foreman becomes the oldest champion in boxing history. Martina Navratilova decided to retire. Bruce McNall charged with fraud. We lost Fred Sonic Smith, husband of Patty Smith of the MC5. He was once a member. And the Bare Naked Ladies debut, Gordon, was a phenomenal success. They nearly equaled that in 94 with their sophomore effort, Maybe You Should Drive. The ladies, Jim Cregan, talks about hanging on to success. We were pretty popular last year, and hopefully, you know, people will dig it this year. We'll have folks coming out to the shows when we come around. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to sustain that kind of, like, wow! Uh, kind of... Uh, thing, you know, that momentum, and I, and I don't expect to, you know, but I, I, I just keep on making my stuff, and if it hits uh, the right nerve in the pop charts or whatever, that's cool. Bare Naked Ladies, number 20 on K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 94. Let's go! K97's Top 97 Countdown of 94. We're into the top 20s. The Bare Naked Ladies, Maybe You Should Drive. In 94, the goatee that the uh, ladies were sporting in 93 became very, very popular. You're not kidding. Everyone's wearing one. Jay O'Neill from the journals got one, for God's sake. There you go. Just shows you how far it's gone. I'm Todd James. And I'm Bruce Kenyon. 1994 was the year Ace of Bass became the first Swedish kazillion album seller in 20 years since ABBA. 
Sadly, it also spawned a resurgence of <laughs> ABBA mania, prompting an ABBA clone band to tour the world. And supposedly that uh, tour will be coming to Canada sometime in 95. Remember the Beatles mania type thing? Yes. Same sort of deal. ABBA Lookalikes. Clones. Exactly. I can hardly wait. We're in the top 20 with the sign from Ace of Bass on K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 94 at number 19. 19 on K97's Top 97 of 94. By the way, the Top 97 is based on chart action, record sales, and requests over the past 12 months. Mariah Carey continued to sell millions in 94. It doesn't hurt to be married to the president of your record company either, although I don't think that had much effect. I think she'd still sell just as many. At number 18, here's Music Box on K97's Top 97 of 94. Mariah Carey at number 18 on K97's Top 97 with Music Box. Another soundtrack, Canada's Sweetheart and Lorena McKennett when K97's Top 97 countdown continues. Now, here's more of the Top 97 CD countdown of 1994 on K97 Classic Hits. I'm Todd James. And I'm Bruce Kenyon. You know, she's been crossing the country for years now with her harp in tow. Man, you don't travel light when you're carrying a harp, do you? (laughs) Anyway, in the process, she has quietly racked up large sales, and she's got many, many followers in the country. It's her fifth CD, The Mask in the Mirror. It's at number 17 on K97. We're talking about Lorena McKennett on the Top 97 Countdown of 94. Look at you. You look... Where'd you get that dress? Oh, um... I don't know, I just bought it. But I think I'm gonna go change. Cause no, don't. You look beautiful. You you look like... You look like a doily. Without even a recording contract, Lisa Loeb found herself played on radio and video stations across North America. The bespectacled Loeb hit it big with a song on the soundtrack to Reality Bite starring Ethan Hawke and Winona Ryder. Lisa Loeb and Nine Stories helped put the Reality Bite soundtrack into the number 16 spot on K97's Top 97 Countdown of 1994. You say... K97's Top 97 Countdown of 1994 at number 16, the Reality Bite soundtrack featuring Lisa Loeb and Nine Stories and Stay, I Missed You. One of your favorites of the year. I think it'll be a standout when you look back at 94. It's one of those songs that sort of sticks out. Oh, boy. Don't put me on the spot here. Well, let me look ahead here. I'll find one for you for sure that's bound to be better. Oh, and we're waiting with bated breath. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bruce Kenyon. And I'm Todd James. Canada's sweetheart has earned a place in history with her Color of My Love CD. It earned diamond status in 94 for sales of 1 million copies in Canada alone, meaning that one in every 28 Canadians is a proud owner of her latest collection. Okay, name the other two Canadians that have done that. There's only been two others that have done that. Brian Adams. Right. Corey Hart. Corey Hart. One. Corey always Hart forget was the that. other one, yes. And where is he now? That's true. Celine married her longtime manager just weeks ago in a ceremony compared to that of Chuck and Dyes and Wayne and Janet. <laughs> At number 15, it's Celine Dion, Color of My Love, on K97's Top 97 CD Countdown of 94. Here's The Power of Love. Celine Dion on K97 at number 15 with The Power of Love. You know, I think that song should be a hit three or four more times. <laughs> Jennifer Rush had a hit and I think it was 83 with it. Monstrous. Remember? And someone else recorded it as well. That's right. And I don't recall who it was at the moment, but uh, her version, as good as any of those. Ten never. years from now, I'll bet someone else records it. What yeah. goes around comes around. It's like the lion sleeps tonight, never seems to go away. You're right. We're back with two Eastern products and an Oscar winner when K97's Top 97 Countdown continues. More music you want to hear. Edmonton's K97.